And welcome inside the Alamo Dome for the Valero Alamo Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania. This is the 25th anniversary of this game, and what a terrific matchup we have for you. Stanford going for its 10th win, taking on TCU out of the Big 12. David Shaw and the Cardinal hoping to get a 10-win season for the sixth time. Had done it in five of the previous six years. The Cardinal coming off a narrow loss in the Pac-12 championship game against Southern California and hoping to end the season on a winning note here in San Antonio tonight. I think it had us break some tendencies. Adam Nunez fake rolling. Punt. He's going to fake it. Nunez, and he's not going to get it. And the gamble from Gary Patterson does not pay off. An excellent play by Brandon Simmons to make the stop for Stanford. And he's an animal on coverage units anyways, but what a great job. Watch him come off the edge. He's going to be on the right side of your screen. Take on the big run. Look at that. Uses his hands. Get a big old offensive lineman off of him. Watch this. Look at that. Unbelievable job making a big play. And that's not one guy away from breaking it. Stanford had two or three other guys in position. They were prepared. We always see trick plays in bowl games. Stanford very prepared early for the fake punt. Costello, good time, throws it a little high. Was looking for Dalton Schultz, one of the tight ends. There is a flag, the flu. So now Stanford is going to try the field goal. This is going to be a 52-yard attempt off the foot of Jet Toner. Toner has been outstanding. He was hitting from about 50-plus in warm-ups. Good kicking conditions inside the Alamo Dome. On its way, and it's going to be wide to the left. And TCU gets away with the botched fake punt. Ford Frogs will have it back when you come back. So TCU has it back. Kyle Hicks at running back. Kenny Hill going to try to go some more. Got some running room if he wants. Instead nope. throws it back into the middle. And it's intercepted by Frank Buncombe. Buncombe inside the 40. Still on his feet. He's going to be hit and dragged down inside the 25. So for the second time tonight... Stanford has great field position this time off of Kenny Hill miscue. And you can't believe what you see all the time. Watch this. Watch Stanford late. Watch them rotate up and you can see they're going to bring the nickel off the corner off the edge. Now they play safety back deep. Reading the cornerbacks or reading the QB's eyes and obviously Joey we talked about this watching tape of Kenny Hill. Sometimes these kind of throws off his back foot. What does he do? He throws bad balls when he throws off his back foot but fullback is like a unicorn or a dinosaur in college football these days. What is that? <laughs> Love has it. Love finally has a crease for the first time. Love stays on his feet. Bryce Love pushing, driving, touchdown! Lost his headgear, never lost his feet. And one of the most impressive parts about Bryce Love is his toughness. He's 195 pounds, as they say, maybe adding a couple pounds, but the ability to run the ball between tackles, carry guys into the end zone, runs behind his shoulder pads, and that's just strength at the end to get it in the end zone. And some help from his friends. Which is perfectly legal You're dang right, it is now. 15-yard touchdown run for Love is 18th rushing touchdown of the season, and Stanford takes advantage of the Kenny Hill miscue. Toner for the point after. He is true. And the Horned Frogs wanted to get off to a quicker start than they did two years ago in this bowl game. So far, that has not been the case. Bryce Love bounced that umpire out of the way. Lose the headgear score. Touchdown. He just eats people. It's, I mean, it's he remarkable. literally just fires off, hits people, wrestles them for a little bit, throws them off, and, and makes play after play after play. Hill taking a deep shot, had a man out there, threw it short, and it worked out for him. Jalen Rager, the freshman, makes the big play. He underthrew him, but Rager was able to come back to it and catch it, and it's the first big positive play of the night for the Frogs. They're going to try to go quickly after the 42-yard pickup. Got to make plays like that. It doesn't have to be great throws. you got man coverage on the outside, throw it up, let your playmaker make a play for you, get people out of the box. Hill, quick slant, Diars has it, John Diars inside the 20 and the Frogs have answered and moved back into the red zone. A sophomore from San Jose, not too far away from the Stanford campus, a TCU kicker will try to give the Frogs their first points of the night. 
This is going to be a 38-yard attempt. Bunts puts it on the way. And right down the middle. So TCU salvages three points. They were very, very close to squandering another opportunity when Okariki just couldn't hang on. They've got some bodies to rotate up front. And just bigger ones than they've had in the past. And a lot of backups on that defensive front right now for the Frogs. Costello on second and long to... Finds his man, Connor Weddington. Weddington over the middle, and it'll be a first down. And they like to use him as a go-deep guy. He's a big playmaker. He's the next in line, I think, for big playmakers. Connor Weddington, he's a true freshman. Look at him. The little angle route inside, isolated on the linebacker. A pass to the running backs. Here's Love. He's got a crease. Love has a first down. And Love's inside the 35-yard line as he inches closer to the Stanford single-season rushing record. Christian McCaffrey ran for 2,019 yards. Bryce picked up 21 on that one. And Bryce Love looks better running than he does walking. When he gets up off the ground and walking <laughs> back to the huddle, you can see that limp, you can see that ankle, but you can't tell when he puts that foot in the ground and takes off upfield. David with Shaw told us yesterday, he said, I, I've got a conscience. I feel guilty. I'd tell Bryce, you're done. And he said, no, 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 coach, I'm good. And he said he'd go for a 50-yard run. He said, I guess he's done. Costello feeling some heat. Finds Weddington again, who slips the tackle. And Stanford's inside the 20. And how about the move from the freshman Weddington? It was TCU in space that we were wondering about. But instead, it's Weddington who's made a couple of plays, making guys miss in the open field. Trevor Spates at running back. Spates from the state of Texas, from McAllen. He had a whole gaggle of family members here. Enjoyed visiting with them yesterday. Costello steps up in the pocket, throws to the back of the end zone. Arcega Whiteside is out there, and J.J. Arcega Whiteside has a touchdown. Watch his first read. First read to the flats, not there, reshuffles his feet and then drops a dime in the corner of the end zone. Great job by Costello and going great, through his progression quickly. And great job by the offensive line. If you let your quarterback pump fake, bring it down, and still step forward to throw that ball, your offensive line is doing a nice job of giving him protection and space to read the coverage. Costello took advantage of the opportunity when Keller Christ was injured this year, and Costello... Highly recruited guy, USC and Michigan both after him, and he was three for three, 48 yards, and a tight spiral spinning the magic beam. Just a great job of Justin. I mean, he, he wanted to go, he wanted to go to the flats first. Great job seeing the coverage, making a big play. Kenny Hill. He's thrown a couple away when he's had running room before. Justin Reed is there to hit him and stop him on what will be the final play of the first quarter and will bring up a fourth down as we have a Stanford player down. Bryce Love just about that from the Stanford single season record set by Christian McCaffrey. Needs nine yards, may get it right here. Love has 10, has 12, 13, and there... Uh, they're going to give him about 11, I guess. That should be enough to get him past McCaffrey for the single-season rushing record. Look at the first move. Look at that. Look how quick that is. He takes the ball, penetration right away, right in his face. He makes moves with his shoulders square quickly, gets downhill in a hurry, and that's why he's made so many big plays and set the French freshman record now, or Stanford record, excuse me. Opening moments of the second quarter. Costello is this strong suit throwing it deep, but he throws it right into traffic and it is picked off. Nick Orr with his third interception of the year. And that was not the smartest move by Costello. He was looking for Donald Stewart, but a lot of horned frogs back there. 
And, and this is a route with two receivers in it. And if you're if you're TCU, you're thinking we only got to cover two guys because Bryce Love doesn't go off for passes. This is another situation where because Bryce Love is not in your pass game, when you do pass it, you only got two guys out there and four or five guys covering. That is a terrible decision by Costello in this situation. Hill throwing it out to Diars. He was covered tightly by Quentin Meeks. DRs couldn't haul it in, and Frogs will have to punt it away. Uh, fourth down and one. Stanford brings a lot of big folks in there. Cameron Scarlett, short yardage running back, marks the fullback, shifts over, and Scarlett will run behind him, and a short yardage play that converts. Maybe a little too soon to bring up one that almost Stanford. did, perhaps should have, <laughs> or USC. for Scarlett and Stanford against SC. Stanford uses his personnel in a variety of ways. A lot of guys have already contributed in the first quarter plus of his 25th Valero Alamo Bowl. Spates has it. Spates into the secondary. Now he's back into the red zone. That was an awkward looking handoff from Costello. And Costello is a little bit of a banged up hand earlier in the season. And Watch he him reach got his out. hand hit earlier. He got confused. He yeah, I the, think he did. He thought the play was going to the right and then did a great job. Watch him adjust and then up backhanded, put it right in the gut. And I'd look up here at the top of the screen. Your matchup right here, you got some serious height up top. Costello's looking the other way. He throws it up top. J.J. Arcega, white side, his second touchdown of the night. Jeff Gladley's on, or Gladney's on the other side. He's the tall corner, so they went after him. Well, I mean, he's tall. He's six foot. But watch the box out by Arcega Whiteside. Look at the box out. Look at him put his body on him, play basketball, get the rebound, reach over the goal line. Man, that's too easy, Joe. Coach Patterson told us he wants his corners to reach up through their hands when they catch the ball. When you're getting boxed out like that, you can't, you can't get to the hands. There's no. nothing you can do about it. Big bodies, Stanford wide receivers on the outside. You got 6'3", you got 6'6", you got 6'7". Size more than offsetting the advantage the Horned Frogs hoped they would have in space. Little trouble with the hold, no trouble for Jet Toner as he knocks it through. And the Cardinal up 21 3. And if not for the Frogs' history in this particular building, one might think they're in a world of trouble. To be fair, they probably are. Now, option with Kenny Hill gets. Across the 35 and close to the 40. Joey, to your point, is there anything schematically you've seen Stanford doing that would just... you got three Stanford defenders down low. you got two wide receivers. It's not a smart move to throw the ball down low. Stanford wanted to take away all of the smokes in the screens. Callum Bailly showing pressure. Yeah, and that just changed, quarterback's David. Left side. He just went inside. Alana Lua has a first down. Shawo working his way through the Stanford secondary and... Finally brought down by Ben Edwards. And this team changed a lot with Darius Anderson getting hurt. Shawo has to do a great job. This is a good-looking human being, by the way. How, how big is he, Reese? 6'2", 6'3", 215. I mean, you look at that. That's a big human. He's got... Quint, who was giving up a pound or two to Harrison. Just a few. In the hotel ballroom. Just a few. Yesterday. Quint had to go see the dentist after it was over. Third down. Hicks. Looking for room. Nice bounce to the outside. Hicks inside the 20 and finally knocked out of bounds. And TCU's in business. Alameen Murphy perhaps saved the touchdown. And they had to do it, man. They had to get the running game going. Third and five, you think it's more of a passing situation. Kenny Hill's been running the ball. Look at him read the outside, read the defensive end on the outside. Hand the ball off and Hicks making a big play. Now you get to the six-yard line on first down. Keep running it. Now uh, Hill may run it this time, Kenny keeping it himself, and he gets into the end zone for the Horn Frog touchdown. A sign of life from the TCU offense, a 76-yard drive capped here. He wanted to throw the bubble, you see it, he's right there looking at Obviously, Rager on the outside does a great job. Don't throw it. The numbers weren't there. Does a great job scrambling around. And again, that was Kenny Hill's feet on that drive. That's what made that drive go. It's not his arm. Continue to run him, especially now you can when it's only 21-10. 
saw a little option. We saw the touch pass jet sweep to Turpin. We saw Alana Lua, who had a couple of big runs, and so did Hicks and TCU back in it with their first touchdown of the night. So Hill firing and has his man out there, Jarrison Stewart, making the grab as we check in with Quentin. Blocks the hatchy high. They played for John Kitna. Kit Kat. A yep. former NFL quarterback. Shuffle pass. Look, Alana Lua has it first down. He's inside the Stanford 30. And TCU with a really strong opening drive here in the third quarter. Great job. Again, you get Kenny Hill on the perimeter. You've seen him have success. You've got to stop him as a runner. He has the option to keep that or pitch it underneath. Again, everything in this offense right now going through Kenny Hill and his feet. Motion in the swing out it. to Desmond White. He can throw it, and he throws it back to Kenny Hill. Hill's got open space and an escort, and Hill waltz into the end zone. Touchdown, Horn Frogs. We saw Hill catch a touchdown pass against West Virginia, and now he goes 27 for his second score of the night. He's got one running and one receiving for the quarterback. And you can see Sonny Cumbie is now getting in a rhythm. These play calls now, misdirection, run plays, pass plays, and that's when trip plays start to work. When you get a defense off bounce and they don't know where you're coming from, it sets up the trip plays. They have to worry about quarterback run. They have to worry about these, these running backs getting out wide, and so the defense has to react now. They didn't have to react early in the game because they weren't having success. Now you can see the rhythm of the TCU offense. Trick plays don't work for a Stanford, though. The extra point is running between tackles, Remember? but it's working Trip today. Trick plays don't work. Extra point is no good. There was a little trouble with the hold. So it's a five-point lead for the Cardinal. But a very productive drive to open the third quarter here, capped off. By the throwback, Desmond White to the quarterback, Kenny Hill, and TCU's back in it in San Antonio. Same and look, same bunch set, SEC, tight ends up top now. SEC officiating crew, there's the power toss again, there's Love. Love into the open field, Bryce Love, foot race. Does he have enough on that ankle being chased by the fastest man on the Horn Frog team, Gladney, and he did not catch him in time. Touchdown, Bryce Love. Another big run, 69 yards to the house. Power toss again, throws it to him, pick a hole. Breaks a tackle, cuts back to the left, and usually nobody even stays in the screen with him. Gladney, great hustle all the way down the field. Did he get in at the end? Looked like the ball might have been. He's in his right hand. Watch when he gets pulled back out of bounds. The ball doesn't. Ah, does it hit the pylon in that yep. direction? Touchdown. Where's our pylon came when we need it, huh? <laughs> his 13th rush of at least half a hundred. There are teams that don't have that many. TCU doesn't have that many plays as a team of over 50 yards. And Love has been a big play waiting to happen in his first really big one of the night and his second touchdown run. So we have opened the second half with some fireworks, a methodical, efficient drive from TCU, answered by a lightning strike from the big play running back Bryce Love, the Heisman runner-up, into the house for the second time, Cardinal up by a dozen. It is indeed. He's brother Eric, standout player at LSU, and now for the 49ers, his dad was a track star at LSU. Kenny Hill firing into the middle and he's got his man making the grab is Rager in the freshman to across the 40 and a good answer from TCU after giving up the quick strike to Bryce Love. Better if you're Stanford you got to keep him in the pocket when he throws the football. Alana Lua going to get that big body turned up field. Gets the first down, sheds a tackler, and Shewo Alana Lua is down to the 25-yard line. Another first down for the Frogs. And that's easy. That's easy reads. That's easy pickings. But 
Now they're going to go tempo, too. But this is what they've got to do. Get, to, get the ball to your running backs in space. Rager's going to take a break. Two backs. Snell going in motion. Hill looks that way, and instead they'll tunnel it to Diars. John Diars. Diars muscling his way down close to the 10-yard line. A Stanford headgear came out of that pile. As Diars, the strong run, the transfer from LSU. Got his undergrad degree at LSU, played a couple years here, now has his master's degree. And now they manufacture with the offense. They pump the, the bubble outside and then run the tunnel underneath it. Just an easier way to get an easy completion. Now, this is the area where Kenny Hill struggled. This is the area where you make him be a quarterback and fit the ball in the tight windows, and he hasn't been very successful. The headgear that came off, David, was Frank Buncombe, who has a couple interceptions in this game. So now both starting safeties, not on the field, for the Cardinal. First down inside the 15 for TCU. Down by 12 as we head towards six minutes to play in the third quarter. The 25th annual Valero Alamo Bowl. Hill looking for some room. Hill firing back into the end zone. Touchdown, TCU, Desmond White. White threw the last touchdown pass to Kenny Hill, and this time he catches one from Kenny Hill. You can't cover this long. I mean, there's nothing you can do. They did a better job of keeping him in the pocket and making him be a passer, but he keeps his eyes downfield. And great scramble drill coming back across. He was, I mean, when you saw White, he was all the way on the right side of the field with Kenny Hill. He goes all the way across the field to the left side. Way too much time. Somebody's got to get a little more pressure. TCU missed the last extra point. This one is true, so it's back to a five-point game. The offenses have revved it up here in the second half. Kenny Hills found his rhythm, and we've got a good one going in San Antonio. Also two. Costello getting heat, gets rid of that Scarlett. A rare catch by a running back for Stanford. Scarlett ripping deep into TCU territory, and the Cardinal back in the red zone. Plenty of time in bowl preparation to break tendencies. All season long, they didn't play, take advantage of the backs out of the backfield. This is the second time we've seen tonight ISO a backfield, ISO a guy out of the backfield, and another big play. First time, it was, it was Weddington the Weddington. The first time, yeah. Yeah. This time, they hit Scarlett. Yeah. The touchdown percentage allowed coming into the game tonight was second best in the country, but Stanford has been very proficient in their red zone trips. Jump ball time. Who's it going to be? It looks like man to man outside. I'm just going to throw the jump ball and let our Parkinson. receiver. Throws it to the back of the end zone. He was looking for his roommate, was Costello, and unable to make the grab is Caden Smith. Top of the screen. Oh, my goodness. Like, I know you like your roommate, but look up top. Corner blitz. Nobody over the top. No help whatsoever. Didn't see it at all. Yeah, Costello oh. threw, threw it to the only place where there were two defenders. They had man-to-man -man on the left side and a blitz on the right side and went to the only place where there was two defenders. Only his seventh start. I'm betting he sees that next year and tosses that for the easy touchdown. <laughs> I bet he sees it on the sideline when they show oh, him a picture of that yeah. one. <laughs> I imagine. So Jed Toner is going to try to pay off the long pass to Cameron Scarlett with three points, and he does. So Stanford gets three, but they should have had six. If I was them, I would bring some pressure and try to get to him fast. And Phillips is going to the outside hoping to get some. A pass to the outside and the first down. White makes another catch. He has a Fumble. touchdown catch. Fumble. Ball's out. Stanford trying to strip it away and they do and take it away after TCU had picked up the first down. Malik Antoine making the play over on the side as White didn't secure the ball. And the Stanford defense needed a play. You could see TCU, even after losing all the yards on first down, got good yards and made it a third and four. And they have a first down going here. And they've been moving the ball these last two quarters very easily. Stanford's defense needed a play to get their confidence back and get off the field. And we're seeing a 
terrific one tonight in Bryce Love, though he's not on the field at the moment on this third down and 10 to start the fourth quarter. Stanford on top of TCU by eight. K.J. Costello with pressure in his face. He's looking for Arcega Whiteside. Couldn't get the throw to him. It'll be fourth down. Reese Davis, David Pollock, Joey Galloway, and Quint Keston. Glad to have you with us from the Valero Alamo Bowl. Hill, just in front of his end zone, has a man out there. It is Rager, and he's off to the races. Nobody will catch him. freshman backed up out of your own end zone that's what you like to do take shots and Rager smoked Murphy he was four or five yards behind an easy throw how about the throw by Kenny Hill Reese chasing points you happy about this it's very early but I would go ahead and do it now. The problem becomes if you don't make it here and Stanford scores a touchdown against a two-possession game. Yep. Go either way here. I'd kick it. The conservative play is to kick it. Because then you see Stanford go down and kick a field goal. and I just, Field goal won't make that much of a difference. The touchdown is going to be the problem. That would make it a two-possession game. But they've made their decision. 68. Hill, throwback, has a man, oh, and he absolutely dropped it. That was Garrett Altman, a guard, who lines up at tight ends. They had a two-point play, and another wrinkle, trickeration, goes against Gary Patterson. And it wasn't an easy play. It's in his hands. When you're, you're asking the big fella to run out here and make a fairly nice catch, and each play you used to see a quarterback lob it up, and the guy's standing there, and he can just easily catch it. That's, that, that's oh. an athletic play needed to be made right there. Oh. Oh. He's, he's stopping and cost Stanford a lot of yards. Third down and 18. Pressure on Costello. Costello is knocked down. He gets up and run. That was L.J. Collier back there applying the heat, and Costello's had a lot of pressure from the Horn Frog. And Bandigo came off the corner first. Ooh. He came around that edge, and he made Costello step up in the pocket. And that is textbook how you rush a passer. You keep him in the pocket, you bring your ends around the corner, make him step up into the hands of everyone else. Yeah. Costello was easily down. What is, Completely down, knee, side, elbow, and shoulder down. You know what's Not great sure about that? what that was. Uh, obviously, Collier's going to get the sack, but... Banigou did an unbelievable job, like you said. Of, it's the first sack of the day, by the way. Maybe after that last play. Wow. Costello, I told you guys, Bailey, he'll flip that field. Here's White. Did he outkick his coverage? Here's White down the sidelines. White on the way. Another big play for TCU, and the Frogs have the lead. Punt from Bailey. A 76 yard return from Desmond White, the senior from DeSoto, Texas. And Reese, you can have a big punter if you want. And this is what I was trying to tell you. The distance that, that the punt returner has when he gets the ball in his hands is too great for your return team. And now there's a lot of room for an athletic guy to make some guys miss. And that's why White catches this ball and turns it up. And now all of a sudden, he's out in space. Good punt returners love a punter with a big leg. How about that high step at the end? That could have been called for a flag as well. Easy. I'm glad Easy. they didn't. I'm just saying, they, they, they Come do on, call baby. it. Come on, baby. Come on. 36-31. That's what the coach is telling him right now, by the way. Make sure you get into the end zone. The Frogs have their first lead of the game. High stepping into it. Got away with it. Got away with it. Come on. He's down at the bottom. When are they going to take their shot downfield so they can get the ball in his hands? Anthony Tejada giving him some space at the bottom of the screen. Whiteside is there. Tejada in the open field. And Whiteside or Sega beats him. And Tejada gets him by the shoestring. Or that might have been an even bigger game. Exactly what I said. Restrum the five-yard route. Just run it inside. <laughs> <laughs> and then see if he can turn it into a big play. 
Picked up 21 on third and eight. Love and Scarlett in the backfield with Costello. Wheel Scarlett's out there, and there's the running back again for the second time tonight. Cameron Scarlett finally wrestled down, maybe eventually, inside the 20-yard line. Is Scarlett, who only had four catches all season, has two now tonight. And just like we called it, they're going to the running backs are going to be all over the place. I'm, I'm being facetious. They don't throw the ball to the running backs very often. How about this? Fake it to Love, run the wheel route. You see there's some confusion at the linebacker spot. That's because they're not used to covering the backs out the backfield. No. You know, they, if they've watched film of Stanford, they're like, their backs aren't coming out to catch the ball, so why cover them? In this situation, I might run it. They are going to throw it underneath. Got his man, the freshman Weddington again, and it's a first down. And Weddington, when they put him in the game, he's, he's made big plays. You saw him in the backfield. Now you see him at wide receiver. He is a playmaker. He's they put Smith in the slot, though, which now gets a big body in the slot. Takes away the double team out wide. They throw it up. Arcega wide side. Fights for the ball. Flag comes in, and he just beat Ranthony Tejada for the touchdown. His third touchdown catch of the night. There's the throw. There's the throw that Costello wanted to make on the earlier down. Passer Let Whiteside get there and post 11. up. Let him get Two set. This isn't a timing round. Let him get touchdown. set. A Tejada grabbed him, held him, interfered with him. <laughs> Still couldn't stop him. Take his shirt off. It doesn't matter. And he's, you've seen him do that all year long. That's, that's nothing new. Strong hands. Just a big body. Now Stanford goes with two. Well, they have to try to make it a field goal game, so... Now you should. It's funny, the missed extra point by TCU, and then the missed two-point conversion eventually forces Stanford now to go for the two-point play. Why wouldn't you go right back to the size on the outside? First of all, I love what they did. David Shaw was a great job putting Smith, the tight end, in the slot, so now you can't double-team Arcega Whiteside outside. D does it again. See, now you can't double team the big fella. So now they now look for Caden Smith, 82 in the slot because they've got Smalls out wide. Right back at it. And that time they were looking for Smith and it was a little too tall and it's a one point lead for the Cardinal. We, we've got to finish. You don't want to be in the second half fight with uh, TCU, do you, at the Alamo Bowl? Not here. Oregon two years ago squandered a 31-0 lead at halftime to lose in triple overtime to TCU. Frogs hoping for more heroics. Underneath and complete. And there in space goes Jalen Rager. Rager who had the big touchdown catch of 93 yards earlier. Kenny Hill has completed his last eight to the ground now. Alanalua, first down and more, and running through defenders and taking the worst of that one was Frank Buncombe. Frank has two interceptions and a fumble recovery tonight, but boy, he took a shot from the big running back from TCU. Look at this O-line work. I mean, this is man-to-man -man blocking. You don't see double teams, and then you see delivering the blow. Back to the ground, Alana Lua scores through inside the 25 and another first down for TCU and it looks like Stanford's starting to get worn down a little bit on defense. They got nothing for him. They got no answers. Kenny Hill's been throwing the ball. Now they're lining up and powering the football. But yeah, they, they don't rotate a ton of bodies. They don't have that kind of depth. Score the touchdown. Obviously, a field goal leaves you vulnerable to the Cardinal answering with a field goal in the waning moments. They see pressure. Look at the body language on, Harris, on, on Harrison Phillips inside. He's, he is gassed right now. Hands on he hips. is dead tired. Hill to Hicks. Can Hicks get there? No, he cannot. Fourth down coming in a terrific stop by the Stanford defense. Mike Tyler from his outside linebacker position. Phil Put your defense on the field. Has played pretty well. Cole Bunce will try to give TCU the lead. From 33 yards out. He's made one from 38 tonight. Bunts on the way. Frogs back on top by a deuce. In the 
mistakes like that, being smart. Two offensive penalties before the ball was even snapped on this possession. Stanford in need of a first down, hoping perhaps to get Bryce Love back on the field. Right now, more pressing is to get that first down any way they can. Costello throwing it in the middle, and it's intercepted if he held it. And it's Gaines. You get a third and long in a situation where you have to pass the ball against a Gary Patterson defense. That is playing right in his hand. A man under situation. You have to go over top of the front guy, but the safety is behind to give help. So there's always going to be a defender playing back. He's underneath. There's going to be a tough throw. How many times have you seen this ball this season if you've watched Stanford and their receivers go and make a great play for him and bail Costello out? That time, Gaines had none of it. Great coverage. Way to play the football, not let the big tight end come back and make a play. The most productive defensive lineman, period. Likely his last game in Stanford. Alana Lua, who's really played well tonight. He, this is a guy who has been challenged by Patterson to fulfill his vast physical potential. And he played well against Baylor, and he has played well tonight. As Patterson is celebrating, is that first down ought to do it for the Frog. Making a couple really bad decisions, but stayed the course. They started running him, and then you saw everything else came to life. I, tell you, I think Desmond White deserves a little bit of that, too. Gary didn't change shirts at halftime. He stayed the course, and he gets that purple shirt doused, and it might be a little chilly at the moment, but it feels good. Two coaches who have established not just good teams, but terrific programs embrace. The final ticks going off the clock here in San Antonio as TCU wasn't a 31-point deficit this time, but a 18-point deficit. They overcome. They win it 39-37.